In the mid-1500s, European mariners started bringing black Africans to America as slaves. This forced migration was unique in American history. But the slave trade was not new to Europe or Africa. In the 8th century, Moorish merchants traded humans as merchandise throughout the Mediterranean. In addition, many West African peoples kept slaves. West African slaves were usually prisoners of war, criminals, or the lowest ranked members of caste systems. Welcome to EFT News and Info, and today we'll be talking about the history of African Americans in the United States. But first things first, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do consider doing it. And don't forget to click the bell icon. The capture and sale of Africans for the American slave markets were barbaric and often lethal. Two out of five West African captives died on the march to the Atlantic seacoast, where they were sold to European slavers. On board the slave vessels, they were chained below decks in coffin-sized racks. An estimated one-third of these unfortunate individuals died at sea. In America, they were sold at auction to owners who wanted them primarily as plantation workers. Slave owners could then punish slaves harshly. They could break up families by selling off family members. Despite the hardships, slaves managed to develop a strong cultural identity. On plantations, all adults looked after all children. Although they risked separation, slaves frequently married and maintained strong family ties. Introduced to Christianity, they developed their own forms of worship. Spirituals, the music of worship, expressed both slave endurance and religious belief. Slaves frequently altered the lyrics of spirituals to carry the hope of freedom or to celebrate resistance. In time, African culture enriched much of American music, theater, and dance. African rhythms found their way into Christian hymns and European marches. The banjo evolved from an African stringed instrument. The sound of the blues is nothing more than a combination of African and European musical scales. Waterville was partially an extension of song and dance forms first performed by black street artists. In the 17th and 18th centuries, some blacks gained their freedom, acquired property, and gained access to American society. Many moved to the North, where slavery, although still legal, was less of a presence. African Americans, both slave and free, also made significant contributions to the economy and infrastructure working on roads, canals, and construction of cities. By the early 1800s, many whites and free blacks in northern states began to call for the abolition of slavery. Frederick Douglass, a young black laborer, was taught to read by his master's wife in Baltimore. In 1838, Douglass escaped to Massachusetts where he became a powerful writer, editor, and lecturer for the growing abolitionist movement. Douglas knew that slavery was not the South's burden to bear alone. The economy of the industrial North depended on the slave-based agriculture of the South. When the Civil War began, many Northern blacks volunteered to fight for the Union. Some people expressed surprise at how fiercely black troops fought. But black soldiers were fighting for more than just restoring the Union. They were fighting to liberate their people. Beginning in the 1890s, many blacks started moving north. World War I opened many factory jobs. In the 1920s, strict new laws drastically cut European immigration. The drop in immigration created a demand for industrial workers in the northern cities. Southern blacks, still oppressed by segregation, began to migrate northward in increasing numbers. Young black men eagerly took unskilled jobs in meat packaging plants, steel mills, 
and on auto assembly lines in Chicago, Omaha, and Detroit. Black workers unquestionably improved their lives in northern cities. Indoor plumbing, gas heat, and nearby schools awaited many arrivals from the rural south. Discrimination also met them. Harlem and uptown New York City neighborhood drew black migrants from the south. Black commerce and culture thrived in Harlem. After World War I, a group of black writers, artists, and intellectuals gathered there. Like Marcus Garvey, many sought cultural identity in their African origins. Unlike Marcus, however, they had no desire to return to Africa. They found creative energy in the struggle to be blacks and Americans. This gathering of black artists and philosophers was called the Harlem Renaissance. Langston Hughes, a black novelist and poet, used the language of the ghetto and the rhythms of jazz to describe the African-American experience. Jazz continued its development as a uniquely American art form in Harlem, where prominent nightclubs like the Cotton Club featured great jazz composers like Duke Ellington and Fletcher Henderson. Their music lured whites uptown to Harlem to share the excitement of the jazz age. Zora Neale Hurston combined her writing ability with her study of anthropology to transform oral histories and rural black folk tales into exciting stories. The Depression brought many blacks and whites together for the first time. In the cities, a half million African Americans joined predominantly white labor unions. In the South, poor black and white farmers joined together in farmers' unions. Today, African Americans make significant contributions to every segment of American society, business, arts and entertainment, science, literature, and politics and law. Though issues of discrimination remain, African Americans endure, achieve, and lead. And on that steely note, it's time for us to call it a day. But we do hope that you liked the video and found it informative. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Your valuable suggestions are very important to us, so do post them in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video.